This is Divine Lifestyles with Tara Magalski. What is a divine lifestyle? Passion, purpose, and living in alignment with your truth. Thanks for tuning in to Divine Lifestyles, feeding your spirit, mind, and body. I am your host, Tara Magalski, and today I am here with a very special guest and good friend and fellow superhero, Hal Price. Now, Hal is an author, heroic heart specialist, and spiritual empowerment coach. And here's a little bit about Hal, although you will get to know him in the next few minutes. As a recovering workaholic disguised as a highly successful Fortune 100 corporate branding and marketing executive, Hal hid his authentic self and his divine gifts from the world for over 40 years. And after spending 59 years of using his gifts and talents in the service to others, Hal is now right on time in rescuing his inner child to return to joy, wisdom, and playfulness and bringing this back into his world. So in 2013, Hal was surrounded by the death of both of his parents, a lack of a fulfillment in his work, and was facing a physical heart challenge. And at this time, Hal set forth on his transformational journey in February of 2014 to identify and reclaim his own heroic heart. Hal, as, as we all know, and everyone that knows you, you are an amazing, truly amazing man. And I do want to get into heroic heart, amazing gifts that you're bringing into the world. But first, I want to focus on, on, your, on the moment when you realized your, your, that catalyst for your transformation. Mm. Now, when you, was it the death of your parents? Was it that moment? Was it a series of moments that led to the transformation? Tara, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm so honored to be supporting people's awareness and their awakening and their own transformation. And thank you for the service you bring with the programming that you're doing. I really appreciate that. So Thank you. Thank you for taking just, the time. Oh, you're very welcome. It's really a, um, for me, it was a drip, drip, drip of many, many life occurrences. Um, but it all, it all, came to a head for me uh, on the night of February the 24th of this year, 2014, at 425 in the morning. Oh. I'd been given little signals that you're not on purpose. You're not bringing your gift. And I'd been given glimpses of how great it could look, but I, it wasn't that I was afraid of dying. I think I was afraid of living. Mm. And um, in that moment at, uh, at 425 in the morning, God grabbed my heart and he said, Hal, you can do this here and bring your gift forward that I've been working on you for years to bring forward. Or I can take you back to the other side and you can be a great little angel that will help someone else bring this gift forward. But what you have is going to come out. I'd love for you to do it. It scared the living you-know-what out of me. <laughs> And um, I got up during that moment, and I went and found my will, mm. my physical will. Yeah. With with my my request and my um, desires for what would happen to me, and I put it at my front door, and I left my um, I left my sister a note, in case in case they found me the next morning. And in that moment, Tara, um, I, I found an old will and I gained a brand new one. Yeah. I had the will to live. And um, from that, I decided that I was going to bring, instead of bringing sexy back, I decided to bring joy back. <laughs> and um, from, that very, from that very minute, I... Um, I made decisions to leave my job. I told my boss that um, I loved him dearly. But I finally realized that I loved me more and that I couldn't keep doing my life the way I was. And the gift that I really have is to, to connect with people and to write and to tell stories. I love telling stories. 
And I'd been given that away and it wasn't being used the way that I know that it should have. So I gave him like a two months lead time for me to go get all my medical work done while I was still paid, being paid for. And um, I got a baseline understanding of where I stood. And at the time, I weighed 320 pounds. And um, the doctors all told me I was a walking miracle. They said, for a fat guy, you're in phenomenal shape, Hal. Don't know how you did it, but you've got a chance here. And I took that chance. And I took um, the first two months off after I left my job, only dedicated to me living. Nothing else. And I started walking and I started watching what I ate. I started watching what came out of my mouth and what went into my mouth. I watched my attitude. I really put a conscious effort on being the best me I've ever been in my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm down 75 pounds as of we're recording this today mm -hmm. in six and a half months. And um, I'm not stopping till I'm shining. I'm just not going to stop. So. That wow. was my catal that was my catalytic moment was the heart grab yeah. and the opportunity to discover in that moment I realized that it was gonna take a heroic heart to go mm -hmm. where I was gonna go. So. Well, well let's talk about that. Let's talk about heroic hearts and what you're doing with this vision that you that you had been given. As I sat back, because I I've really been blessed as I walk to get downloaded with incredible wisdom. Not my wisdom. It may be from a higher part of me, but I know it's from um, many angels who are on the other side. You know, I have a million cheerleaders on the other side working <laughs> for me. And um, I just, uh, I get inspiration when I walk. And I just got to the point where I realized that for 59 years, I'd been everything everybody needed me to be, expected me to be, wanted me to be except for me. Mm. And in that moment, I said, you know what? I would love to create a program that allows families and children to find their unique gifts and what their dreams are individually and as a family unit. And how do we bring families together to allow kids to not be told what you're supposed to do, but what's your gift how can you bring it into service? Who are you? Why are you here? What's your purpose? What's, what, what did you come here to do? And in my world, Tara, every child on the planet comes in knowing who they are. They're nurtured. They're supported. They're given the tools. And their parents buy off on why they should be doing it and supporting them in the direction of a divine gift that they've been given. Because for me, I knew... The thing that really turned me on was there was this spark that we've talked about, this divine mm -hmm. spark. The God spark. We've the coined God a new spark. term. <laughs> it is. The God spark. And that God spark in me said, I sent you in there with this gift. I, I've, I sent you a couple of videos to look at that have really inspired me also. About the odds of us even yeah. being here is 10 to the 45 zeros behind it. It's the same odds as being struck by lightning 1,279 times in one day. It's highly unlikely that we're here, that everybody ahead of us lived and survived to childbearing to ages and had us, and we got here. So we're here. We're a miracle, number one. Number two, we're given a gift that we're supposed to bring into the world. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we are a miracle and we have a gift has to mean something is really, really special about every single person. And nobody takes the time to learn their gift because they're placed into service to do what our parents' dreams are for us, which is their dream. It mm -hmm. wasn't our dream. So I want parents to understand that each kid has a special purpose and that each, each parent can help them discover their own dreams and the family have dreams together. So I've created these superhero camps. They're called superhero dream camps that we'll be launching next year. And I've created a series of books that allow parents – uh, really, the books are for the parents, but I'm, I'm disguising it so they'll read it to their kids and get their own lessons while they're reading these children's stories to their kids. So it's just called Heroic Hearts, and I'll tell you more about where that inspiration came from. And keep asking questions because I'll keep talking forever. <laughs> 
So I'm going to change it up a little bit because I, yeah. I was listening to one of your interviews and you mentioned in one of your interviews how your cravings for food yeah. were replaced by your consumption of joy and more life. And that just rocked my world. You need to tell yeah. me more. <laughs> I, you know, we have emotion, you know, the reason we're so powerful is we have emotions. I mean, and the emotions typically run us. And there are times when we don't have something met inside of us that we're mm. just looking to fill up with anything. Yep. Be it an addiction, be it a food, be it a whatever it is. Amen. And, mm. Amen. And what I what I what really struck me was I wasn't hungry anymore because mm. there was something was consuming mm. me for the first time in my life. And this God spark, mm. which was just all of a sudden so alive, like when I was first born and took my first breath and I was in <laughs> awe of everything that was here, I started seeing everything in a whole new way. And I would just life. Mm. And all of a sudden it's like, I don't, I'm not hungry. I don't need sugar. I've got this energy source that is endless. And that's really why I dropped so much weight so quickly. Mm -hmm. I made good choices, but I put live food in my body and I let those. This Go ahead. is exactly what I try to connect the dots for my clients. You fed your spirit and you were so full. Yeah. You were so full. I say, I, I say, it's like you fill up your love tank. You know, yeah. it's like filling that up. So you're so full that you don't need these other things, that what you eat and put into your mouth becomes secondary because everything around you is so full and it's giving you all the nourishment you need. How, here's, here, here's my quote. I'm just making, I'm making this up for you because you just said that. <sighs> how can I put anything, how can I put anything in my body when my cup runneth over? Oh. My God, I feel like hallelujah. I'm telling you, when you speak, this is how I know right. you are moving with the divine creation, God spark, Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. I know because when you speak, it's like you're sowing seeds into my heart, into my spirit every time. And it's been like that since the moment I met you. Yeah. And yeah. every time you hit me and you hit my little, my spirit, man, I'm like, Oh, I want to, I hear like angels singing. <laughs> yeah. What I've learned, Tara, is if I'll get out of my way, I'll amaze myself. Yeah. And I just, I've allowed my, a higher part of me to enter into my heart. And for me, somebody asked me the other day, what's, what, what's ascension to you? You know, how do we ascend? I'm like, you know what? It, for me, it's really, how do we create heaven on earth is what you're really asking me. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, how do I allow my heart to move over my mind so that every thought is from my heart, but I act in that way. So it's really my heart moving up into my, my thought process and my thought, my thoughts are of love and what would love do in this breath? So in every exactly. breath, what would love do right now? So that's how I started to think. And it's, it's been transformative just uh, in watching miracles. And we'll talk later about miracles yeah. because they're happening instantly for me about uh, what miracles really are. Yeah. Because it, it's when you get into that space uh, and I say this, when you, when your spirit is fed, and and you're feeling so good and so alive you are going to then in turn have more positive thoughts right you right. immediately feel like a better more loving human being and then in turn you're going to drop the 75 pounds you're going right. to treat your body well because there's no way that you're not right so it is so important oh my gosh i i just love i want to really talk about some of your struggles though and then we'll yeah. get to your miracles because yeah, yeah. Because once you are in a higher vibration and you are living in alignment in your divine yeah. lifestyle, you are going to be able to call in and manifest immediately, right? Mm -hmm. Miracles happen. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're there. So let's just go there. So tell me about the miracles. Tell me a little bit about stepping into the miracles. Well, first of all, let me explain miracles to you. Okay. In the one moment when everything was created from the one God spark that had a thought of itself, which is, I am love, 
it blew out into everything that's ever going to exist, ever will be, ever was, ever is going to. And all those particles are out there to be aligned for us, for our enjoyment. So when we're connected, we're love. When we can have love connect with love, it's a magnetic attraction where we're inviting those particles to be made into matter. So what we say from our heart and with emotion really matters. Mm. It turns into physical form. So there are no miracles. It's only what we've refused to see from faith to know that we command those particles to come into our lives. So all I'm really doing is allowing love to invite itself back to me through people, through experiences, through tangible stuff. So let me let me set the story up for you for you for just a second. So one of the one of the things that I had to do at the age of three, I had nearly drowned um, in 1958, and in that moment, a part of my playfulness died because when I play, I die because I was playing and was careless, and I fell into a very deep pond, and um, I was resuscitated. And from that moment, I became much more controlling of what I did and where I went. And I became, I put myself in a box and I locked that inner child out of my life for 59 years. So what you're seeing is a, you know, it's it's a jail run. I've broken out of jail with this kid and that's why everything's happening so quickly. So I wanted to go back and capture my inner child. So I did a lot of, I did a lot of work emotionally. Um, on what that blocking had done for me. And I discovered that I, my inner child was really ready to play and really angry with me because I hadn't let him out in a long, long time. So I was asked by my uh, one of my guides, my teachers here on the planet, to name my inner child. And I, not knowing anything, I just I, I named him Elijah. And I call him Eli for short. Okay. And after I named him, I'm like, I need to go figure out more about Elijah. And Elijah was one of the first people to ever ascend. But he hid in the cave for years from God Mm -hmm. because he was afraid to use his voice to speak and to really bring God into the world the way that God wanted to be brought into the world. So this little bear that I've created is my inner child. I take him everywhere I go. I want to see him. Bring him in. Here he is. (laughs) That's Eli. Hi, Eli. <laughs> Miguel, how is he on camera? How's he look? <laughs> Looks great. So, oh, he's happy about that. So he's really excited to be. All right, you need to sit down. So, but he's got his boot, He put his shoes on, but he's not. He, you know what? Tonight he wore his Batman underwear for you, Tara. <laughs> just, just so you know. So anyway. Well, thank you, Eli. Ever, yeah, you bet. So <laughs> what? What I've been. This is a story. It follows Joseph Campbell's um, heroic journey, the hero's journey. And it's a story of a little bear who gets separated from his mother. She has, uh, she has him prematurely. She goes into labor prematurely, and his heart's not fully developed. And he's taken from her to a special hospital called Heroic Heart Hospital, where he goes in with the little infant boys and girls, humans. And um, he leaves... His mother sings him a lullaby, and that song stays in his heart for every day he's gone. And he decides one day, his, uh, his nurse, they all have these little red heroic heart uh, blankets, and she tied it around his neck so it wouldn't get away from him. And he stood up one day, and he saw that he was a superhero, and he saw his cape in the, in the mirror, and he's like, To the hospital to make his way back home, which is everybody's journey. We're just trying to find our way back home. But mm. so I, I'm out filming Eli to, to start to document the story and put photos together with this. Uh, this these it's a series of eight books, and uh, the first one is you know the journey begins. It's Eli's epic hero's journey. So I'm I'm taking photos down in Sonoya, Georgia, which is where The Walking Dead is filmed. It's a great little town. Uh, with great shots and backdrops. And I took him to the playground, the merry-go-round, and there were 
he was by himself, and he's got his goggles on, and all these kids come and want to play with him. And they said, can we have his goggles? So I gave all the kids goggles. I said, no, you wear goggles. Everybody's got goggles. And they just started having a really good time with, with Eli. And uh, one, of the, one of the fathers walked over to me, and he said, um, what, are you, what are you guys doing here? you got two, two cameras. You're filming our kids. I'm like, let me tell you the story. So I tell him the backdrop about Eli being separated from his mom with premature labor and being taken away, and you know, he fi- tries to find his way home. And this guy's name is David Norman. And uh, David starts tearing up. And I'm like, David, are you okay? He's like, Hal, you're telling my story. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, you see that little boy over there? His name is Paxton. He's now two and a half years old. He was born with Down syndrome, and he had congenital heart failure. He was taken from us here in Atlanta to Memphis, Tennessee, to go to Labonhur Hospital for Children. And we were, he was taken from us, from us for a very long period of time. I know exactly what this bear's journey is. He says, what can I do for you to help you with what you're doing? I said, be the absolute best dad you can be to Paxton every single day. He said, I'm, you know, I, I can definitely do that, but I'd love to give you a testimony for a blog one day about this journey that I'm on with my son. And I said, you know what? What I'll do for you is I'll, I'll tell you all the characters in the upcoming books, and Paxton will show up as one of the characters. So we'll, we'll do that. But <laughs> it, for, for three days in a row, Tara, when I told that story, just by showing up with a little bear playing, I got to tell the bear story. And I had three people on three separate days tell me that it was their story. So I know it's something that's meant to come. And story is such a powerful way to let us heal ourselves. And so That was no coincidence, right? No, no, not at all. So not tell me a little bit about some of the challenges that you faced while you're moving through this transformation and all these new discoveries? Um, the first thing was just to get used to it. Um, I, I had to change my whole, re- my regimen changed me. I was really guided to do exactly what I needed to do. Um, it was like, if you're not alive, your gift won't live. <laughs> Go get healthy. Go find out more about who you are, why you're here. Do some inner work and, um, and just trust that what you're doing is going to be really paid off well. So yeah, you actually, Tara, you know, inspired me. To, I'd never sat down and thought about it until you asked me to come and do this. Uh, oh, you're breaking up a little. Pull over to make some notes. And I wrote, oh, Ooh. a little? Yeah, a little bit. Say that okay. again, because I want to catch that. So I said, you, you kind of inspired me by knowing I was going to be on tonight. And I just sat down and I started thinking about what's the journey of transformation that I've gone through. Mm. So I wrote down seven C's for you. Okay. The awesome. seven C's. Okay? okay. So the first was just connection. When we come in, we're connected to everything and we don't know any better and there's no ego and no, none of that stuff. And we learn to trust and we learn to love. And then at some point in time, this controlling factor comes in over the top of us, which is our parents giving us boundaries and trying to help us move through. But they really start to put their stuff on us, Mm -hmm. which is there to protect us and to make the tribe stay together. So we think like you do, you know, (laughs) <laughs> and then at some point, there's this slow dripping of cr- a crisis. The third C is a crisis yeah. that comes in. I had four crises that came in, but they were blues to my heart being grabbed 59 years later. Mm. I didn't realize that until I put the dots all back together again. But, you know, between the near drowning, a near bankruptcy in 1984, um, the death of a dear friend, Adam Petty, who uh, died on, uh, in 2000, uh, my divorce, and then, um, then, so God was giving me hints of, you're not on purpose. You know, mm-hmm. there's a, you're getting divorced for a reason. You're not connected to joy. You're not connected to. You need to learn forgiveness. You got to learn to forgive yourself first for whatever you're holding in there. So I did a lot of interior work. So that was there were cathartic moments. That was my fourth C. Was a cathartic mm-hmm. moment where I got in touch with the emotional bond that was holding me hostage and tried to release those bonds slowly over time to really connect with who I really 
because I didn't know me anymore. I knew what I was supposed to be. And then I had my catalytic moment, you know, which was my, my heart grab. That was my fifth C, was that mm-hmm. catalytic moment. And then it took me into compliance with who I really was. So when I got connected with who I am, I started living from you know, what I'm meant to be. I became I am, and I lost I was. Mm-hmm. I had to let go of all that. And then finally, for seven, it's really completion. Can I walk the walk every day and complete who I am until I go back home with my own heroic journey? So the, those were the processes that I thought about that I've gone through that got me here. But it's, it's a slow drip. It doesn't happen overnight. There's not one moment, but there are little hints. God's mm-hmm. winking at you the whole time like, something's coming. You better pay attention. <laughs> And, um, you know, that's what got me going. But once I understood all that, you know, I've been very blessed to have wonderful teachers and friends and guides that have really helped me break through and find my superhero costume because I'd buried it in the, in the phone booth for years. So. so what is it that keeps you inspired or focused to stay on this path of transformation? If you had to say one thing, what would that be? That really inspires you and keeps you focused. The, mir- the miracle of me. Mm. That. I love that. Be- I, because I know that when I'm hooked up, it's really joy. When I, when I see joy in everything and I am in awe of every creation that exists, there's no prejudice, there's no... All of that stuff falls away. And I see people for who they are and I connect with their I am presence and I see their I see your spark instantly. I see your three year old child every time I meet you now because I come at you from a whole different <laughs> place. Yeah. And they say we enter heaven through the heart of a child. Mm-hmm. So when we're light and easy and not putting all these burdens on ourselves for I've got to accumulate this and be like mm-hmm. this person and have, 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 I don't own anything right now except a really big heart. Mm. And that's all I want. That's all I want. So give, uh, give our listeners some tips or advice for your daily uh, care practices. <clears throat> well, the first thing I do in the morning is I give three gratitudes for being alive. You know, what am I thankful for in this day? Um, so I start from that place of just surrendering and saying, today's going to be magical. What's coming? <laughs> I can't wait. Thank you for letting me breathe the air today. And then I, um, I'll do a little meditation for just a little bit. Um, I'm not a big meditator because I really meditate when I'm walking. I, I let nature calls me to tell me stuff. Yeah. Um, then I, you know, I start off with my green fiber, high fiber smoothies. It scrubs my arteries while I'm walking. Good it's boy. Just like scrub, a scrub, a scrub, a scrub. And, uh, you know, I've got a great formula for that that I'll share with anybody that would like to know it. Um, It's a good recipe, and you can do that as well. And I go go outside, and I get in the sunshine, and I just walk nature. And I've been walking seven miles a day, but I'm like, it's sure taking me a long time. I'm not getting a lot done, so I've really compressed it to – I've moved now more into – you know, cardio and uh, toning and stuff. Cause I've got, you know, I was having people trip all over me when I walked by cause I was dropping two pounds every time I walked. <laughs> so, um, I had to go tone, <laughs> I had to go tone things up a little bit. And, uh, and then I use the afternoon, <laughs> I use the afternoon for, for inspiration. I sit and write what I got when I was walking or I'll record it while I'm walking to capture it. Mm. And then I'll come back and do something with that. And then I'll take Eli out for a little spin, and we just have a good day. And I drink tons of water. You know, mm. you've got to drink your body weight in water or whatever it is, and uh, or half your body weight in water. And I just have – I've also found, Tara, that things that don't vibrate where I once was, I've had to let go of. Mm-hmm. That includes some friends. It includes some practices. It includes some attitudes. It includes some food choices. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't serve my highest purpose, it's not going to stick around. So it's a dedication to me and to be in my own life. It's really all I want to be. It's a joyful miracle. That's what I want to be. Well, you're doing it. You are (laughs) doing it. 
Now, if could you give any tips or advice to someone who is struggling with possibly finding their higher purpose or really stepping into their divine lifestyle? What kind of words of wisdom would you have for someone listening? First of all, I, I, oh, you're breaking up. Since you, Tara, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear I know. you now. I, yeah. So I sent you three videos that really inspired me while I was going through this. One of them is the miracle that we're even here. And when you watch that, you'll realize what a gift you are. The fact that you're here means there's something important that you're here to do. Mm. Secondly, was the uh, it's called your life in jelly beans. <laughs> and, you know, Eric James had shared that with us a long time ago, but it's really, you see this whole video of your life every day is represented in jelly beans, and there's 28,835 jelly beans in the normal life. And you see where they went for work and where they went for sleep and where they went for all these other things. And at the end of all that, you really only have 2,700 jelly beans to live with. Got to make those jelly beans count every day. Every single day. The third thing I gave you was a motivational video that was called Unbroke. And um, it just tells you that you can't see everything, but the dots are being connected with every decision you make. The painting that you've created called your life. But for me, it's really knowing how special you are, that you're not here by mistake. If you're here, there's something in you that's meant to be called forward. You have a calling inside of you. If you suppress it, you will find ways to sabotage and hurt yourself mm -hmm. because you know it's meant to be coming forward. Just know you're special. Get connected to that specialness. I do numerology for people to help them understand what their gifts are. Um, it's helped me immensely. Um, I do a life, a life map for how, what I want to create in my life. I have a vision board for that. Mm. Um, there's just a lot of little tools. I took the passion test years ago and realized you know, why I was out of alignment and stuff. So there, you can take the passion test, uh, go to thepassiontest.com and just mm -hmm. take a free thing called the passion test to see where you, where's your passion. Where do you rank? You know, are you are you living with any passion at all, or how are you going to tune that up? And there's just so many great planet. We're living in an age of miracles and people uh -huh. have spent a lot of time sharing their wisdom and their triumphs to help people. But you got to find what works for you. For me, it was, I'm alive. I'm going to do something about it. So. so where can everyone who's listening and watching go to find out more about you and possibly look to work with you? In two weeks, I'll have a brand new website. That's www.heroicheart.com dot org singular mm -hmm. if you want to learn about where i've been mm -hmm. you can go to my old website which www.halprice.org and see the journey that i took until i made the transformation wow. so that's that's all there wow oh thank you thank you thank you for taking some, the time tonight to to chat with me and I am definitely, I am ready to work with you. So let's do the numerology. Let's do the map. Let's do the visualization. Let's do it all. <laughs> uh, well, we're just, we're just such precious little creatures. And, uh, you know, we just need to get out. We need, we need to get out and play a little bit more. So there's always Eli a camera. wants to say hi. Are you yeah, a camera he, hog? <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, he's photo bombing my video. So. Anyway, it's way past his bedtime. Take your little Batman shorts and go to bed. But um, everything's great. You know, we're here to make magic. Yeah. We just forgot how. Oh. And you're magical for, you know, bringing this to people. I hope everybody will take the time to really play it a couple of times. Every yeah. interview you do has divine guidance in it, Tara. Mm. And everybody needs to listen carefully and stop it and write it down and replay it and sit with it, meditate on what they're being given and see what fits for them because you're going to give them a wealth and a treasure chest of great guidance on how to live their a divine life. And it's only because it's possible because of people like you. Thank you for tuning in and make sure you subscribe to this channel to get your weekly fix for all you spiritual gangsters. 
Any questions or comments, go to my site at taramagalski.com. Drop me a note. I'd love to hear from you. And stay tuned for next week. I got the good stuff.